This is Katya Nichols. I am Argon Catino. I'm Phil Barrett. And I'm Brian Garcia. And we're presenting on Skyscraper, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now let's take a quick look at the scene in question. Will he make it? Probably not. Let's take, let's talk about why. In this scene, we see the rock jumping from a crane to a skyscraper uh, at what we expect to be 7.6 meters per second at an angle of about 52.6 degrees. Um, he is traveling, we have calculated, uh, about a horizontal distance of 16.17 meters and a vertical distance of 7.722 meters. Uh, this is about from the top of one floor to the bottom of the floor below that. Okay, so the assumptions we're going to make for this clip is that there is no air resistance during his jump. There's also going to be no updraft during it. And neither crane nor the building are going to be moving. They're, they will be stationary. Uh, the rock we said is running at 7.59968 meters per second at a jump angle of 52.6 degrees. Uh, we said he's running this fast because that is the average NFL linebacker, the peak speed at a 40 yard do dash that they could complete. And we were able to find ample information on the rock's body, ranging from shoe size to the max weight he can bench. We found that our 46-year-old hero has a weight of 117.934 kilograms and a height of 196 centimeters. We also took into consideration that the fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt, was clocked at a max speed of 28 miles per hour, and the longest jump recorded, done by Mike Powell, was 8.95 meters. First, we used the measuring tool in Logger Pro to measure how tall uh, the rock is and we used him as a scale to find his vertical and horizontal distance that he has to jump to the building. The horizontal jump would have to be 16.17 meters and his vertical jump will be 7.722 meters. Okay, so here we have the constants. We have the weight of the rock, which is 260 pounds converted to kilograms, which gives us 117 points. 934 kilograms. We have the height of the rock, which is 6 feet 5 inches. Converted that to meters, which gives us 1.9558 meters. We have the horizontal distance between the crane and window found from Logger Pro, which is 16.17 meters. The vertical distance also found from Logger Pro was 7.722 meters. We also found the jump angle of a 52.6 degrees from logger pro and the initial velocity that we got of 7.5996 was given us by average NFL linebacker at its peak of at a 40 yard dash. To find our jump angle, we took a screenshot of the rock at the moment of his jump, using his back leg to pump himself into the air. Using his back leg as a reference, we were able to find a jump angle of 52.6 degrees using tracker programming. Looking at our estimated angle and velocity, we separated the launch velocity into x and y components, and we used the following equations to solve for the final velocity and angle at which he's going to hit the skyscraper. Using kinematics equations taught in class and using the variables that we know the values for, we solve for the time of flight and in doing this, we could then solve for the final y velocity of the rock as he hits the skyscraper. Now, assuming that x velocity is the same as, or x final velocity is the same as x initial velocity, uh, we are assuming that there's no horizontal acceleration after he makes the jump. And after doing this, we can set these final velocity values to a triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse, which will give us our total overall final velocity, which we found to be 28.72 meters per second. And taking the inverse tangent of our y value and x value for the sh angle shown right here, the final angle at which he's going to hit the skyscraper is 80.76 degrees, 
uh, downwards to the left if you're looking at it the same way that the trailer was. Okay, so after finding the velocity and angle he's going to hit the building, we can now find out the position of how far down he will hit the building. Okay, look, so using the kinematic equation we learned in class, this gives us the position final is equal to the initial position plus velocity of the y component times time, plus one half the acceleration of gravity times time squared. Thus gives us a final po position of 39.148 meters. From that, the rock will hit the wall of the building 39.148 meters below his jumping off point, missing the open window by 31.428 meters. To find the force, we began by using the distance equation to solve for accelerations since it's needed for our force equation. First, we assumed initial velocity was zero, which cancels time and initial velocity. We then solved for time by u dividing horizontal distance by horizontal velocity, uh, shown in previous slides, which gives us 33.5077 seconds. With time, we re rearranged our equation to find acceleration, which is 2.6285. With, with this acceleration, we can put it into the F equals MA equation, M which is the rock's weight. Once everything is completed, the force comes out to be 309.9895 newtons. So we now know that the rock will not in fact make this jump. What could be done to change this situation and possibly save the life of our favorite wrestler? We asked ourselves the following questions. How much closer would he have to be in order to make the jump? Our hero also has a prosthetic leg in this film. If his leg is replaced with a rocket, will he make the jump? Would Usain Bolt make the jump? In the following slides, we explore these alternative possibilities. Taking a look at one of our possible alternative situations, where the, where the rock's prosthetic leg is replaced with a rocket, we use the following equation. So, using the equation for position, given in our kinematics lesson this semester. Uh, we solved for time, plugging in our known variables of y position, uh, y velocity, time, acceleration, and time again. Uh, and we found our time to be 2.0132 seconds, theoretically, for this to, to occur. Um, using the same equation, but for x components, this time we used, we solved for acceleration in our F equals MA equation. So acceleration equals force over mass. Now, when we leave this force blank, this will be our rocket force needed to get into the other side. Uh, so plugging in our X final, our X initial, our initial velocity, our time solved up above, our mass of the rock and our time again, we solve that the force of the rocket needed to propel the rock to the other side uh, to hit the skyscraper where he wants to hit the skyscraper would have to be 400.914 newtons straight towards the skyscraper. Next, we look at the possibility of a closer jump and ask ourselves how much closer the crane will have to be to the skyscraper in order for the jump to be successful. To find the position needed to make the jump at the angle and velocity he jumps at, we use the kinematic equation learned in class. We set x initial to zero since it is in the tip of the crane and our x acceleration was also assumed to be zero, which gives us x velocity times time. We then plugged in our known values and we got 9.281 meters. Finally, we explore the possibility that while running down the, the crane, Usain Bolt suddenly shows up and decides that he's going to help his buddy out and do the jump for him. Okay, so assuming that Usain Bolt top speed of 28 miles per hour, which is about 12.52 meters a second, we could use that to solve for our y and x initial velocity. We will then plug the x velocity into the kinematic equation to find our time. Once we find the time, which is 2.1269 seconds, we could use that to find the final y velocity. 
So given our final velocity, we could then assume that our initial x velocity is the same as the final x velocity due to no acceleration. And we get our new y final velocity from the kinematic equation. So assuming our old x velocity, our new y velocity, we could assume the speed and the angle which he hits the building. And that speed that he hits is 13.29 meters a second at an angle of 55.10 degrees. By further using the kinematic equation, we could then solve where Usain Bolt will land. And according to the calculations, he will land one meter below the window. So he gets pretty close, but he won't make the jump. We came to the sad conclusion that unless the rock is able to either get a rocket leg or move the crane closer to the building, he will in fact meet an untimely end, and we will have to say farewell to our beloved rock. However, to find out for yourself what actually happens, You'll have to see the movie when it comes to theaters the summer of 2018. We'd like to thank Scottsdale Community College and our generous and kind professor, Michael Cannon. Extra credit.